Hi, Roger with K&M Precision Shooting Products. In this video, we're going to do a general overview of our Arbor Press line. You'll see two different height presses on the table here. One is our standard height and one is our tall column press. We offer our presses in a right hand version as well as a left hand version. Uh, you can get them standard without a force pack or you can add the force pack if you want to read uh, your seating force for your bullet. On the Arbor Press base plate, we laser etch a nice little target circle on here for a visual reference on where to place your die to keep it underneath the center of the ram. We also have added a couple holes in the base plate. If you prefer to mount the press to your, to your workbench, you can do that as well. Some of the particulars on the press, the overall height of the standard column is 11 inches, whereas the tall is 18 and 7 eighths inches on the overall height. Working envelope, when you do not have a force pack on, head all the way up is 7 and a half inches comes down to six inches once you add the force pack. On the tall press, that overall working height would be 15 and 3 eighths, and drops down to 13 and 7 eighths once you add a force pack. All of our presses are one inch stroke, again, whether that's the right hand or the left hand version. Uh, as note, our Arbor Press me mechanism in here is actually a toggle on the inside of the press head, so you have a direct feed to the press ram the whole time, really nice feel. Uh, you'll get maximum force right at the, at the bottom end of the stroke with no loose feel that you might have sometimes with a rack and pinion type style. Pretty much the max working force of the press is going to be up around 150 pounds. If you have the force pack on, the standard is going to give you a reading of maximum of 150 pounds, whereas the low force pack will give you a reading of uh, 50 pounds. Okay, let's make an adjustment on our press head height, and it's pretty simple. See these two screws on the side of your press? You're simply going to take your hex key that provide with the press, loosen up these two screws. You can slide the press head up and down to accommodate your die. Once you get them in that position that you like, lock it back down, and your press is adjusted for your, your height of your die. So now let's go ahead and add our force pack onto our press. The best way to do that is to loosen these two screws again. Slide the press head completely up off of the column. On the back side of our ram, we've machined in a little flat, and that little flat is where the screw on our force pack is going to mate with the, with the ram. Take your force pack and slide it in your ram. Tighten up that screw. It's just a small screw, so don't over torque it. Slide your, your uh, Arbor Press head back onto your ram. Tighten up those two screws, and that part's complete. Next, let's go ahead and add our dial indicator to our ram. Got a little thumb screw here, slide that in until it stops. I prefer to lift it just a little bit so that my needle is in roughly the 12 o'clock position. Once I have it there, I lock down the thumb screw, and now when I'm reading it, it's just easier for my eye to start with the needle in the upper 12 o'clock position. So that's the procedure on how to install your force pack and dial indicator and adjust your head and that will be the same whether it's a low force pack and dial indicator or a standard right hand press, left hand press, tall press or, or a standard column press. Uh, watch in the future, we're going to produce another video that will show us how to use the uh, uh, bullet seating die and the neck sizing die with the press. And as always, thanks for watching and please visit us at camshooting.com.